hair to put on your tinfoil hats. All right, J-Man, tell your story, bro. All right, well, hi there. My name is Jay. I'm from the Austin area, Texas. And right now I'm 28, but when this happened, this was about four years ago, so you know, I was 24. Um, I, mean, I work with the county clerk uh, in my my county. I do indexing, and I work in a, in a basement underneath the courthouse. It's pretty cool. And I write, and I'm also going to college. Other than that, I got two dogs and a goat that I love, and uh, an old car that's still running, and I'm surprised. <laughs> Um, 2003. Do I believe? Uh, I I do believe. Uh, like with my story, I can't not believe now. Um, but that that being said, I'm not like a you know a fanatic or whatever. I don't know how you want to call that. Um, like I'm not. So I don't I don't go around searching the world for this kind of stuff. It just sort of happens to me. Mm -hmm. um, so again, this happened about four years ago. Happened at my previous job. One of my previous jobs where I worked at a funeral home. Wanted to see if it was the right thing. And it started at probably, let's say about midnight, a little bit after midnight. Any, if I heard any similar cases, yeah. I mean, if you look at Reddit, you can find as many as you'd like. But, you know, that's really up to. If it can, I mean, if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody else, right? So mm -hmm. it's uh, true until proven wrong, I guess you could say. And so I think it was a paranormal thing, but. I'm sure there's lots of other crap in the world, you know, so I don't know. So, yeah, but, but definitely my experience was certainly paranormal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the story that we're talking about is it happened on, on a Wednesday night in January 20. Uh, what year did Star Wars 7 open? 2015, right? Because if that's true, then it, then it happened in January 2016. Um, and I, I only remember that. I don't know why, but I use movies as timestamps for myself. And I don't know why. Um, I just watch a lot of them. So when I worked at this funeral home, funeral homes, for people who don't know, uh, they have these little duplexes or apartments in the back. And usually... The owners or the managers live in those live in those apartments, just because if you get a body call, you're gonna have to be right there, ready to go. Like, and I guess they they kept with, the, with that tradition just because of the way it's always been. But they need someone who's actually there and ready to go. And also, you're kind of a not really a night watch or anything, but you are. If someone tries to break in there people someone did try a couple of times um you're literally just right there even before the cops are and you know because you live there you're going to be one of the first to know to know about it so even if the, the alarms don't go off you can still call so hang on a second we can look up here what happened was um it was a really slow wednesday for a january and I say that because usually people die for some reason. Funeral homes are their busiest between probably the middle of October all the way to a day or two after Valentine's Day. Um, and that's, I mean, I don't know. You can, you can take that in however you want. And, but anyway, it was busy. It was not, no, it was not busy. I said it was busy. It's not, but it was not busy this day. Mm -hmm. And what happened was everybody went home. I just cleaned the funeral home that day, but I was on call that night and I decided to stay up a bit just to wait for something. And just before I actually went to sleep, just before I actually got ready for bed, um, the phone rang in my, my apartment 
and I answered it. Uh, of course, it was my boss telling me to get ready. So he he went over to the, he arrives to the funeral home. And we get in our hearse. And we go we go out to the country where this guy lived. Apparently, the cops have been the cops got called on this guy. I think what 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 it was was he hadn't called his family in a couple of days, and they got worried. Um. I mean, it was only two or three days, but this guy was also kind of old, so maybe that was a little startling. Maybe he he didn't call after two days and they got worried. But they, you know, this guy had been dead for for about two days, sure enough. So, but he was he was small, he was frail, easy enough to honestly be lifted by one person. So, but but one of the cops that was there helped me put him in on a stretcher. We rolled him in the hearse. And my boss and I just left. Now, because it was so late at night, we couldn't get the, the justice of the peace or the medical examiner, you know, because it was like midnight. Everybody, everybody was at home. So we had to put him in a, a little body cooler so that the next day we could get the justice of the peace to examine the body and decide whether or not he needed to be sent to a medical examiner. Um... And whenever we, after we put him in the cooler, boss says, thanks, bye, he leaves. And that's whenever, you know how you can sometimes feel it in the air? You know, like something is off and you can just feel it in the oxygen? Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's, that's actually exactly what happened. I was like, you know, hmm. I was off the next day, so I was really, honestly, I could have done whatever the hell I wanted. But I decided I was just going to go go to bed, spend the rest of the day just doing whatever, or the next day doing whatever I wanted. Um, I fall asleep, and then I have this, I don't remember many of my dreams, but this is one of them that I've actually remembered. It was a nightmare. I normally don't remember nightmares either for some reason. I just remember, wait, I can just, you know wake up from a nightmare and be like, oh my god, that was a terrible dream, then go back to sleep. This one, however, it's still kind of fresh, even though it was years and years ago. <laughs> so, um, in the dream, I meet the guy that we picked up. And, you know, he and I are good friends. We go hang out, we go get, like, a beer, and then we go watch Star Wars uh, The Force Awakens, because it had only opened, like, less than a month ago, before this. But then after that, after we, you know, hang out and after we're bros, I see him just appear in his cooler. And you know how dreams are. One minute you're standing on the ocean and the next second you're in detention from second grade or something, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how that was. You turn around and you're at work and you're looking at him. And I, I was at work and I'm looking at him. And he starts laughing at, at me just sort of muttering and, you know, I didn't understand him. So I asked him, what? What'd you say? And then he starts giggling and under his laugh, I hear, I'm going to kill your family. And he starts nodding his head. And I was like, what the, what the hell? And so that's when I woke up and I was, I was in a pool of sweat. I've, I've never woken up in so much. I've never woken up so wet and that can be taken out of context because <laughs> he said wet. Ha ha ha. But seriously though, I've never woken up feeling so uncomfortable and so much sweat. And I was actually in a little bit of pain. Um, but it was honestly, it was so terrifying. I was already miserable there anyway. I was already like, I have depression. I am depressed. I take antidepressants, but after working at that place for, for so long, it's like the depression sort of magnified mm -hmm. or intensified, I think is the right word. So I was already, you know, I was already Squidward tentacles at this point. And uh, so I, I wrote my, my two weeks right then and there. And because my laptop was on the Wi-Fi, I printed it off on their Wi-Fi printer that was in my boss's office so that he would see it first thing the, the next morning and of course i went off and found another job and moved out of there 
So, yeah, that's that's that. Mm. Um, I don't know. I've never had any similar case to this. I mean, I remember once when I dreamt that I died and went. I dreamt once that I went to, that I died and went to heaven. And I was excited. I woke up thinking I was dead and I wasn't. I was like, oh darn, I'm still here. <laughs> but but this was not that. So uh yeah, what what do you want to know about? What um, any, what else can I what other questions can I, There were there are two things that you posted. Okay. I used to work and live in a funeral home and then <clears throat> Yeah, and this was this was that was like the last that was the icing on top of the, or that was the cherry on top rather you could say mm -hmm. um, but the second story mm -hmm. it was you know not as intense but still pretty eerie um, I had to take a massive it was my first night there like it was my first night staying there I had just moved in and I lived with my my uncle my older really my dad's uncle but my great uncle and he he had he had the bathroom he was in the shower so and i had to take a shit so i didn't want to wait for this guy because i had you know so i decided i'd just use i decided i'd use the the bathroom and the employee the in the employee bathroom in the, in the funeral home so i walk through the garage and i go right in there open the door turn on the light and I see this black, shadowy figure, humanoid, and it's just standing guard because the first door that you st that the first door that is there to your right, um, after you open that garage, that door to the garage, is the is the room, the embalming room, the door to the embalming room. The embalming room is where you do the quote-unquote surgery to dead bodies so that you can make present them and get them ready for the funerals and burial and stuff mm. um and i just i want to keep that as you know uh discreet as possible just because it's not respect i just want to be kind of respectful about it and mm. i don't want to get too many details on it uh but anyway standing guard to the embalming room is this tall black human looking thing don't know what the hell it is and then it looks right at me and it sees me and it runs like hell to the other side all the way to, down to the end of the hall and it crouches it, it crouches in a corner and it, it like gets in fetal position so i decide to be mr brave and approach it and talk to it and tell him that i don't mean it any harm i just have to take a shit but by the time I get to it, it becomes like one with the shadow that's already there in the corner. So after that, I just decided to turn around, hold my shit till the next morning and, you know, keep it there and not tell anybody about it. But obviously I went back on that part. <laughs> so because so. I remember you had two. This is the one I messaged you about. I wasn't very specific, so that's my apologies. Um, oh. So you, you you basically in your post you referenced it to uh, the Heartless from Kingdom of Hearts, which yes. I have never I have never played, so I don't know exactly what they look like. Okay, well I mean um, I always thought just and even if you didn't, I always thought somebody would just do a simple Google search. Yes, he was a he looked very he looked just like that, except a lot taller. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the antenna. Heartless and Kingdom Hearts, uh, they're. I don't want to say they're the main antagonist of the video game, but they are like little obstacles that you have to fight. Mm. You find out that in, in Kingdom Hearts, you, I mean, the backstory of, of the Heartless in Kingdom Hearts is that uh, when a Disney character goes bad and they become a Heartless, parts of their soul or something, it's been so long since I played it, but I, if I remember correctly, the Heartless are little pieces of someone's soul who has actually gone totally bad. And then that's whenever you get a nobody. Mm. And there's, for every person that's alive, there's a nobody. Like, 
the main character of Kingdom Hearts is Sora, and his nobody is Roxas, so it's just his name with an X in it. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, all I the only I was just trying to reference a nobody to to give so that someone could have like a mental image of what I was talking about. Um, okay. Yeah, right. I pulled up the image, and I can kind of see what you're talking about. And you said it was uh, how tall? It was taller than me. I'm about like about six feet. So, oh wow. Let's, yeah. So let's say it's about seven feet tall. I don't know, tall enough to not tall enough to be taller than me. So that's okay. that. Um. So the best way you can describe it is a tall, like seven foot tall, black shadow, mm -hmm. has the figure of a human. Yeah. Um, and then you said that it saw me, it looked right at me, made eye contact, it mm -hmm. ran down the hall, and it just crouched in fetal position in a corner, like it was being abused or something, right? Mm -hmm. Or like it was terrified, like it was afraid. And then whenever I went over to it to try to calm it down or just tell it that I wasn't trying to piss it off or anything, it became the shadow, like it became a an actual shadow, and I just couldn't find it. It disappeared in the shadow. Of so this, the... Is, this is uh, interesting because I've never heard of anything like this before. Like people will say that they, um, for example, saw a ghost, and it's just like a quick in and out kind of thing, right? Um, but that that you know their their sightings differ. Or bury a lot uh, as to you this is more of like a haunting is what i would call it right um the stack house man that's crazy that you got such a prolonged look at the thing mm -hmm. well that's what i thought too i was like because i i it was there for longer than one second so that's how i knew i wasn't like shitting myself or something you know what i mean like that's mm -hmm. how i knew that i wasn't imagining something mm -hmm. um i also like didn't i didn't even do a double take i was so kind of impressed i don't want to say mesmerized because that gives it too much of a like uh, uh someone who's listening to this would probably assume oh it used it has powers and it mesmerizes you or something no yeah. I don't think I was under this creature's influence, except that I was impressed by it. But I was also obviously freaking out about it. Um, and then when it, when it ran away, I'm like, well, first of all, you're taller than me, and you're probably not a human, so what are you so afraid of, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, come on now. <laughs> but I'm also not going to complain, because if it was a a threatening entity it at least decided to you know not do anything to me mm -hmm. <laughs> but i just i remember it, it was actually just how 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 afraid that it was and as soon as i got close enough to talk to it 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 uh it just sort of went away from it you know it went away mm -hmm. and what do you i'm sorry go ahead oh i was just gonna say i never saw it again never saw anything it never never have seen anything like it and i don't know if i ever will until um, so you obviously have dealt with um death a lot so you should know or at least i'd assume you know what limbo is i do oh yeah yeah so i mean just a quick theory I could come up with as to what happened was it may be someone who had passed away recently and was stuck in limbo. So they, they were, you know, they were experiencing whatever the hell they were experiencing. They were scared and they see you. We'll, we'll assume they saw you cause it looked right at you. Mm -hmm. And to them, you may have been some like crazy, scary monster, which is why, okay they had ran it. I, it's some wild theory like you know i mean okay maybe it saw my inner demons or something or... yeah you know it could be a million things it's just like mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to mind as I mean, crazy as it may sound well no no that, there's nothing crazy about it it's 
you know, you're, we're talking about something that's not, this is literally a paranormal Mm -hmm. experience. So no matter how you look at it, no matter what you say about it, of course, it's not going to sound usual. Um, In my opinion, because I kind of came up with a, a theory about it just so I could sort of calm myself down. And I didn't come up, come up with this right off the, you know, the back of my hand either. It took me, I, I pondered on this for days and days, but what I eventually sort of decided about it was uh, that maybe this, per, this, this is the spirit of a body that we had in the funeral home at the time. Mm-hmm. And maybe this spirit is just watching over and making sure that we don't defile or disrespect its body mm-hmm. or it's, you know, it's dying wishes all the way, like make sure that we do everything we can to follow, make sure that he is handled properly mm-hmm. in the embalming room, even, even down to the, to the stuff that make sure that we at least attempt when people die for some reason, it's the weirdest thing. Um, they, when they're alive, they can fit in their favorite clothes. But then when they die, not so much. Mm-hmm. But I just, that's what I think. I think he was there to make sure that, that we did everything we could to, to respect him and his family. Okay. Um, but again, that's, that's my opinion. Yours is just as plausible and even a little bit more interesting. <laughs> but, you know, yeah either way that's um it's still it could be anything it could have been anything at all i mean i like to get a little outlandish and wild to right to right um, i do too i i mean i write i write science fiction and i'm not mm-hmm. published yet but i still i still write science fiction and outlandish shit too so i try to um in my experience working there. So um, I love rock and I like a little bit of metal. I don't like all metal. Like if it's, if they, if it's just screaming and you can't understand what they're saying, and it's just, just that. I honestly compare it to that of a, to, to the noise that a kid, that a child makes in a candy store. <laughs> um, and I'm not trying to piss anybody off or, offend anybody no no Uh, teach their own teach their own but you know i still i still love system of a down and shit like that but Mm -hmm. whenever i started working there and i the depression my depression got noticeably worse i'm not too proud to say that um i downloaded carly ray jepson's uh discography just to add a little bit of calm music you know to the crazy shit that i already that i already did yeah bro um, i love carly ray jepson don't shit on her i'm, I'm no i'm not trying to shit on her, <laughs> i'm but... just messing with you man it's, it's funny <laughs> I, I love her though no i love her music yeah, i like her music i really do it's i just downloaded i, I re-downloaded emotion today because um i i bought the the album and i don't like my i only have a, i went digital and i have a, an ipad now so my my disc is kind of um obsolete because i don't have a computer to stick it in so i had to mm. had to download it and cave and buy it again so i was gonna go ahead and ask uh so i i assume you've worked with plenty of people in this field have you either conversated with them about or have they ever told you about their personal experiences with anything that may be perceived as uh, paranormal uh, like you mean, like the family members, right? Or it uh, be the family members or like coworkers? Okay, family members or coworkers. Well, I only worked with. I, there was one coworker that I had who do who did do who did believe in the spirit world. Mm-hmm. Everyone else kind of didn't, but this guy did. And I remember telling him, uh, "Yeah, my, I, I told him, yeah, my uncle and I, we were in the." back after everybody left and that movie the conjuring came on and um so we decided to watch it and then 
it got kind of weird after that, so we decided to quit watching it. And um, the guy that I was the guy that I was working with, he was just like, "Yeah, well, you shouldn't. You're y'all are stupid for watching that movie in a funeral home. That's like." That's literally the stupidest thing you could do. It's like you're asking for something to happen. Exactly what he said. He said it's like you're asking. It's like you're actually inviting something in here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I mean, it's just a a movie. And he was like, well, you know, it's still all that. So he, he really gave me the rundown on that. So we didn't watch. I don't think in there we watch, we ever watched a single haunted house or you know, a movie like that. I mean, the only, as far as haunted stuff is concerned, I guess, or supernatural. I mean, Halloween night, we did watch Nightmare Before Christmas, but that's like, there's nothing even real about that. You know, like everybody knows that. Mm. Um, we also, that the Ron Perlman Hellboy was on one night. We watched that too. And nothing, we didn't feel uncomfortable about about that. But with that conjuring, oh my god, that's like, yeah, you're right. It's like asking for something stupid. And so no, like, no, no coworkers or uh, family members talking about how they, um, how they had like seen a ghost or their relative came and visited them or. Nope. Oh. Except this one guy. Except this other guy that I worked with. He. He but even he didn't have an experience. He just said that he believed in the spirit world. Mm. So, I mean, for someone to believe in the spirit world, maybe something did happen to him that he wasn't too keen to talk about, or maybe it was just something that he decided to believe in one day. But that's all he. That's all I got out of it. I mean, there are some people out there who are very just optimistic and they like to believe in that kind of stuff, right? And there are others who. Um, you know, have genuinely had something happen to them, like you, for example, seeing the uh, shadowy figure or the heartless, we'll call it. Um, they have something like that happen to them, and then they're just like, Well, that confirms that for me. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you yeah. know. Um, at the time, that video game and the meme of Slender Man was popular mm -hmm. at the time. Or you know, it wasn't as popular as it had as it had been, but it was still like well known. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but Slender Man had this big population, and now everybody doesn't know about him again anymore. But anyway, one of my friends invited me to his Halloween party, and because I was so like cheap and what have you, and plus I funeral direct people who work in a funeral home always have to dress like they like they're going to church, mm -hmm. so. I, I just sort of decided to put on my my work uniform, suit and tie, and put a, a white pillowcase over my face and be Slender Man. <laughs> um, I mean, you could still tell with the pillowcase being too big for my head, but um, I just remember that. And I remember getting back to the funeral home that night to go, you know, back, go into the back where where I lived. And then I was like, oh, my God, what if something like this actually existed? And please, God, don't let it be. Don't let it exist in this place. Because mm -hmm. God only knows, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I didn't really dabble with that ever again. Stackhouse, you got any questions? Nah, man, I'm loving the stories, man. That's crazy. Like, in, in a, there's a lot of there's a lot of material there. So, I mean, um, I remember, so when I was a kid, when I was like six years old, I watched this movie called Brave Little Toaster. Brave Little Toaster. I'm not I've uh, never, uh, yeah, I've never heard of that. I'll have to look that up. I've never heard of it. Okay. Well, I'll give you a little back, back story. Um, it, it, John Lasseter directed it. It's, uh, and John Lasseter, if you don't know who John Lasseter is, he's the, one of the founding fathers of Pixar. He wanted to do it. He wanted to make a Pixar movie, and he wanted the first Pixar movie ever to be Brave Little Toaster. Um, it's not a Disney movie, although it sounds like a Disney movie. But 
it was animated with Universal. I think Universal. I just know that it wasn't Disney. But the studio at the time shot it down. They said, Pixar, the source material that you're using here, because it's based off of a book, the source material, your characters are going to look uncanny, a toaster with eyes and a mouth. That's just going to freak everybody out. No one's going to no one's going to like that because it's just going to look, you know, creepy. So anyway, if you've never, you've never seen Break, you should, I mean, I would tell you to YouTube the songs from it, but then that might give away the whole movie. Um, but it's like this. So John Lester decided to just make it traditionally animated. And then the studio said, okay, fine, we'll go with that. But they hired some. So they hired some really good animators so that it would look very Disney-ish. Um, but John Lester decided to put in a Pixar scene anyway. And there's a nightmare scene where Toaster has a nightmare and goes to hell. And that whole nightmare is a Pixar scene. It actually makes it creepier than it really is. Uh, because in hell there are clowns and they freak you, they mess with Toasters. I don't know. It's a kid's movie, so we shouldn't really worry too much about the plausibility of it talking about paranormal stuff we're talking about parent plausibility but anyway it's about these home appliances who want to find their previous owner who is now grown up and going to college so a toaster and they're sent these are all sentient home appliances a toaster a vacuum a radio a lamp and a blanket um go on a a trip on a, on a trip to find their 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 boy who was grown up, but they get they get caught up in this storm, and because they're all half of them, or well, more than the majority of them, except for the blanket, they're all uh, electronic devices. So they have to keep themselves from getting wet, like from the rain and stuff, or mm. you know they have to just deal with the the terrain. And this crazy pawn shop owner picks them up, finds them on the side of the road, and he's like a Frankenstein kind of guy. He likes putting shit together. Um, <clears throat> there's a, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Well, anyway, the end of the movie, before their owner finds them, they get sent to this junkyard for cars. And there's this giant, like, magnet that picks up the cars to put them on that little, you know, belt so that they can get crunched. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a song in there called Worthless. Uh, it's a six-year-old's version of Goodbye Blue Sky from Pink Floyd. But anyway, with the depression, I was feeling um, nostalgic. Decided to rewatch this movie. I think it was on Netflix at the time, so I did. But for some reason, it didn't really help with it. And the worthless, the whole worthless song, the whole worthless scene, um, really... I was like, oh my god, these <laughs> cars feel worthless, and I'm worthless too. So I just, I quit watching after that. But <laughs> um, I mean, everybody knows the ending. The the boy, he's he's a grown-up now, but he finds his toaster and his, his vacuum and everything else and takes him to college with him. Happen, they live happily ever after. But, I found it on, uh, on YouTube. The entire movie's on YouTube. It's not oh, very good quality. Yeah, it's like, it's on YouTube, like, obviously. You probably yeah, sped it up. Um, yeah, I just kind of skimmed through it and I saw right as you started talking about it, the um, the the little evil looking uh, magnet that picks up and then they drive off to college. It's kind of an mm -hmm. inter interesting looking movie. Well, really, what I thought was cool though was that, that the cars, like the the appliances, don't want to get killed because mm -hmm. they're they have a purpose, right? But the cars, because they're already like kind of dead, um, they're just sort of the song is pretty much them coming to terms with their death. Um, and there's also of all the cars that are in there, there's a hearse that gets picked up, and he says, "I took a man to a graveyard, and I can't live with the things that I've learned." And I was like, "Holy shit, oh, that wow. is me!" Yeah, and I was like, "Hey, that's me!" In like five seconds, right? <laughs> um, so that's. That really sort of, you know, did a, that was a zinger on me, I guess. So it's all um, like bright and shiny on the outside, but it has a really dark undertone. Yeah, definitely. Really it's like Toy Story 3. 
yeah you know looks looks like one of those stupid little sequels that pixar cashed in on but it's really really actually kind of creepy yeah um, but to think that that could have been the first pixar movie and what would the what would I, mean, I guess we already know what toaster would have looked like but just imagine the eyes on all the other characters like <laughs> Or if it were made today, I bet Seth Rogen would voice the the AC vent. Oh, that'd be hilarious. I love <laughs> Seth Rogen. I do too. Everybody says I look like him, so you know. Mm. Um, but then there's that there's my picture there. So I don't know. Anyway. So I'm going through the comments right now on your post. There seems to be quite a few people who have actually had um they they refer to them as shadow people right for context there's a lot of people who have seemed to have uh similar experiences with shadow people mm -hmm. so like, i mean you're you're not alone right and i mean i kind of so before i moved into this funeral home um i did live with my parents and they lived at the time in this neighborhood that was a block away from a cemetery. And mm -hmm. I remember noticing at night, like, I, I mean, they're, I guess they're called white shadows. Um, but what it is, is basically pitch black, absolute dark, but you can still see little skid marks of white but just in the air. Mm -hmm. But you can still kind of tell that there's, you still, the, the weirder part about it, or what makes it weirder, I guess, is that it feels like you're, you know how when you go in public or like when you go to Walmart or something, you know you're around people? Mm -hmm. Like I know that, of course, you know you're around people, you, you can see them. But when you go in public, even if no one's paying attention to you, you still know that you are like there's a, you're you're noticeable, right? And people are have at least looked at you once or twice. So that's kind of how I felt. I was like, I feel like there are other people in here. I feel the presence of another person. And I remember catching this wasn't as it wasn't as uh, prolonged as the shadow person in the funeral home. This is also before the funeral, but I do remember seeing what looked like half of a torso, mm -hmm. um, and then it just flashed, disappeared. Um, you know, talking about it, I remember when my closet door just opened on its own, and all my shit fell out of my closet, and there was no reason for that to happen. <laughs> and I mm -hmm. and also the fact that it happened more than once kind of gave it away that the place. And at the time when I was on Facebook, I'd get on the Facebook page because the, the neighborhood, there's like a neighborhood watch Facebook page for it. So I got on there and I was like, Hey, I'm not crazy or anything, but I could swear to God, this place is haunted. And everybody else is just on there agreeing, saying, no, this place really is. Because there was a ghost of a little girl in a blue dress that would run from house to house and lock people in their bedrooms or in the bathroom or something. Mm -hmm. And they'd have to, you know, get one of their neighbors or something. They'd have to text one of their neighbors, hey, can you come over here and let me out of my bathroom? The girl locked us in here. And some people would have to wait because some, you know, sometimes it'd be like, yeah, sure, I'll go over there. And sometimes people would say, uh, absolutely not. I'm not going to your haunted ass house. I'm going to spend <laughs> my time away from all that. Um, I'm not playing Scooby-Doo with your ass. So, you know, that's how, uh, but that's how that was. I'm glad we don't live in that neighborhood anymore because it, it was. How, how close to the uh, graveyard were you from there? We were, uh. It was, a, it was a block away. And so whenever I'd go on my morning or afternoon walks, I'd pass it. Okay. And actually, if this doesn't add insult to injury, uh, when Pokemon Go, like, first launched, right, um, one or two of the, 
like the the headstones was you know how in Pokemon Go you go over to like little landmarks mm-hmm. and you get free shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go to one of those headstones, you can get free Pokeballs and potions and stuff. It's kind of messed so, up. Yes, yes, exactly. It's like I don't know who this guy is, but thanks for the Pokeball, dude. Don't <laughs> don't haunt me. I'm just here to play a game. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, something that I've heard growing up is that living across the street or next to a graveyard is actually bad luck. And there have been, um, especially where I'm from, I can't confirm this. Just like, you know, we'll we'll just say it's a rumor. Uh, People tend to commit suicide when they live across the street from graveyards. And I mean, when I heard this, I, I didn't believe in paranormal stuff at all, but growing up and kind of hearing the stories that I've heard, I think that it would be plausible that you know, that could bring some pretty bad juju on your life. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the time, I think it had some... I'm not going to say... Because I don't know. Yeah, that... We're talking again, talking about paranormal, and mm. I believe in this, that, and the other, but luck, I don't really give much thought to. Mm. Now... You know, you can say, well, shove it up your ass. You just told me you saw you saw a shadow person. I don't, you know, you can, I'm not saying that there's no such thing as luck. I'm just saying that I really don't personally believe myself in luck. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe in, I do believe in God. I am a devout Christian. I put that in probably at least one of my posts, but also um, I believe in just circumstance. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't just pray for something good to happen and then it happens it's not like robin williams coming out of a lamp or anything i do believe that you have to do that do if you want something good to happen for you you have to do it yourself so bad now with bad things happening i mean not everybody intends for something bad to happen to them also with that said considering that i i mean i already i'm not the most i mean I don't know, because if, if also if that were true, all the good things that did happen, I mean, there are, I have good memories, there there were good things that happened. I did get my job at the, at the funeral home to try to see if I wanted it. Mm-hmm. Um, I did get a couple of other jobs, I there good things did happen there. Um, so I don't know how, how luck would, would really, would that uh, I mean, just because someone is, has, has bad luck, does that necessarily mean that they're just the most unfortunate people? I guess that's also up for debate. But, I mean, when I think of bad luck, I just think I think of Charlie Brown and every single thing that could happen to you that's bad happens to you. Yeah. And that's... So I don't know. But, on the other hand, I do believe that it's bad juju to live near a funeral or, or to live in a funeral home, and it's bad juju to live near a, a cemetery that matter yeah i don't really know which one is worse <laughs> considering that i lived or you know yeah i resided in one of them and next to another one of them i mean maybe that's why my, my luck isn't so terrible because i lived in that neighborhood where the bad luck is supposed to happen and then i moved into a funeral home so that's d- a double negative makes a positive right <laughs> so I mean, your purpose in the funeral home was to do good for people, correct? Right, right, of course. So uh, maybe there is like some sort of like leeway left for you specifically, and you know others, but in your um, case, and the reason that I that I took the job was, um, it's kind of been a part of my it's 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 not kind of been a part it's literally it's been a part of my life. Uh, since before I was born, my granddad was a mortician. Mm -hmm. Um, my granddad, when he was a teenager, he did stupid shit like all teenagers do. Um, but, and he, he didn't live, uh, where I live. So he didn't live where my family has been all, all my life. Uh, but he would, he would chase fire. He, if a fire engine would ever pass by his school, he'd jump out the window and chase the fire engine. Mm-hmm. Everybody thought he was like, everybody just thought he was stupid. 
So his principal calls him into his into the office one day to tell him that he's not going to graduate. Pisses my granddad off. Granddad punches him in the face. Jesus runs away from home. Yeah, Jesus is right. <laughs> he he gets super pissed off. He runs away from school. He runs away from home, and he goes to he goes to mortuary school. He becomes a mortician. About a year or two later, after he gets his license and he gets situated with that career, he goes back to his old high school and sees his old principal still working there. And because in my grandfather's time, technology wasn't such a big thing, so you could easily make a fake ID and a fake background for yourself and get away with it. You know, that's what that's how he got into mortuary school. Uh, but he went over to his <laughs> he went over to his principal. And he said, are you going to graduate me now, bitch? <laughs> this principal, and this principal just said, you know, I never wanted to see you again. I never thought I'd see you again, and I hoped I'd never see you again. But I'm going to graduate you now just because you've got your, your director's license. And so he, that's how he graduated high school. Um, and what happens next, I mean, is pretty much he, was, he, he moved down here to Texas. Um, and he became a director, and he was very well known and very well revered, actually, in my hometown. And um, he worked at one funeral home uh, until I was about nine, retired from the place, worked at another funeral home. And they laid him off because they said he was too old. So that made everybody, all the employees of that funeral home got really mad. And they decided to go and make their own funeral, go and start their own funeral home. And that's the funeral home that I got the job at. Mm. So what I saw, I guess what I was, it's a roundabout way of saying it, but I just wanted to, you know, follow, follow his footsteps. Because he was a great guy. He really was. Um, I mean, aside from punching this principal in the face, he was still a pretty decent dude. And I still think it's epic that he did that. I'm like, you, you wouldn't. And everyone else is like, oh, you don't know half the shit that he'd do. So yeah, that's how it was. It's kind of like the family uh, business in a way. In a sense. It kind of was, yeah. Um, but it just wasn't wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, and I've always kind of been the the black sheep of the family. Uh, so find, so deciding and, you know, discovering that this wasn't really my job, my cup of tea, I was like, you know, I'm going to disappoint so many people when I leave here, but I can't just stay here just to make other people happy because I'm not going to be happy. So that's why I just decided to, to get out of there and go back to college and, uh, you know, do the stuff that I actually care about. You know what? Good for you. Well, thanks. I mean, you... I can't speak for you, but in my personal experience, happiness is more important than acceptance than, acceptance than being, you know, rich, than, you know, and than giving your life to something that you don't care about. Exactly. Exacto. Mm -hmm. Well, we're hitting on an hour here. Yeah. I think that's good, man. I think that's good. Right on, man. Thanks for coming on. It was awesome. Thanks for letting me I love the stories, man. That was awesome. It was great chatting with you. Yeah, it was great chatting with y'all. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. <laughs>